the worst thing a woman has done on the first date? Story one. I don't have any total horror stories, but when I was away at school, like two hours away from home, I matched with a girl from my hometown when visiting my parents. We talked for a few days and she wanted to meet for dinner, but I had already gone back to school and it was the middle of the week. So I skipped to an evening lecture to go see this girl, as a horny 19-year-old this seemed like a good idea, and drove two hours in the dark and snow, got to the restaurant, and when I went to message her that I was there, I found she had deleted me off everything. I texted her. We didn't text often, but I had her number and got no response. Still have no idea why she did this, but she was well aware I was driving two hours to meet her. The last message she sent me was after I told her I was leaving, telling me to drive safe. Not sure what changed during the two hours I was in the car, but I never heard from her again. Needless to say, my parents got a surprise visit from me that night, and I didn't feel like telling them why. Story 2. We had previously agreed on a restaurant, time, and to just do separate bills, to which I would offer to pick up hers at the end to be polite. I arrived on time and MSG'd that I was there. I got a reply stating she was already inside and seated. The server had just bought her another glass of wine and was walking away with an empty wine glass and a glass. The first words out of her mouth weren't even hello. They were, you're paying, right? I don't have any money. I didn't breathe a word. I just turned around and left. Story three, brought a friend to dinner. Okay, sure, bring a buddy, I suppose. But the friend wanted to sit at the table and not the bar so we could have some privacy. And they both thought I was going to pay for dinner for all of us and drinks. And friend made it clear she was only there to cock block because her friend liked to sleep with guys and she was there to prevent that. I kind of felt like I was being accused of a close relationship crime. I just looked them both in the eye, told them, I ain't the one, and left. This was before we even got our drinks too. Story 4. This isn't terrible as much as it was very strange. I'm from upstate NY, she was from Florida. She had made several questionably accurate statements throughout the night, but I finally said something when she claimed lacrosse originated from Florida. It's pretty well established it came from the Iroquois tribes of western central NY. She proceeded to open Wikipedia and read the entry while inserting Florida throughout in an attempt to prove her point. I dropped it but checked when I went home and she was just openly lying. Story 5. Bragged about stealing, yes literally stealing behind his back, her last boyfriend's Gucci watch. Then proceeded to complain about her last date for being too fat. Then genuinely got offended I had an Android phone instead of an Apple. Real nice person. Story 6. The most confusing one I've ever had was when I met this girl at this place. We sit down, some nonchalant be sing normal stuff. She asked me when my birthday was, I told her. She goes, oh, you're a Leo? What the fudge? And the she got up and stormed out. I was like, hmm, I may have just dodged a super ultimate bullet there. Story 7. She called me for calling a person George. The guy's name was George and he's a friend of mine. Both of us looked at each other. Turns out used to call people George at one point. Either way, she refused to apologize or act like she made a mistake. So George asked me if I wanted to join his group. Only time I have ever ditched a first date. Story 8. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I met a girl via a dating app. Wasn't instant sparks or anything, but she seemed nice enough and we had some shared interests. So I invited her out for dinner and she accepted. She showed up to the date looking like she'd rolled out of bed. Sweatpants, a plain t-shirt, zero makeup. I'm not someone who thinks a first date needs to be all dressed up and formal, but it was clear she had put zero effort into her appearance. We sit down to eat, and she absolutely refuses to engage in the conversation. Every question I asked got a one or two word answer with zero follow-up. Have you ever been to this restaurant before? No. How's your week going? Fine. I saw on your profile you coach Little League softball. That must be a lot of fun. It's okay. The entire time. It was painful. I finished my meal quickly, walked her to her car, thanked her for her time, and left. Later that night, she sent a text saying, I had fun tonight. I figured she was just being polite, so I didn't respond. The next morning, I woke up to a text with multiple paragraphs from her calling me a jerk for ghosting her and saying how if I wasn't interested in seeing her, I should be upfront and say so. It was, and I'm not exaggerating, several times as many words as she'd spoken the entire date. To this day, I'm perplexed by the whole thing. All I can figure is maybe she was really anxious or something on the date. It was bizarre. Story 9. She was late and explained that she needed to break into her ex's house, who she broke up with less than a week before, real quick. She then showed me her bad unflattering that she posted on Reddit. Edit. I do not remember where they were posted. Story 10. She looked nothing like her photos, invited me back to her place which looked it hadn't seen a cleaning product since it was built, did blowtorch dabs for 20 minutes before acting like it was time for me to take her to bed. I said I needed something from my car and left. She still texted the next day asking when date two would be. Story 11. Where do I begin? Within five minutes, she told me she just broke off an engagement. Ten minutes later, she said she went out with a guy the previous week, hit it off with him. 
But then when he went to the bathroom, she left the bar with another guy in a cab. Told me to buy her drinks. Said I'd be sitting at the table while she's in the bathroom. I look up 10 minutes later and she's talking to the bartender drinking. Asked her what's up. She said she didn't see me. I drank her beer and left. Texted her that I had a great time sarcastically and said she wanted to meet up again. Wacko. Story 12. We had ordered drinks and an appetizer after she picked one of the most expensive restaurants in town. She took a few sips and then asked me about my job. I explained a little bit about it, said it was pretty boring unless you are a software firmware network nerd, and asked her about her. She asks, does it pay well? I kind of agree and then try a second time to change subject. She says, I'm asking you how much you make because I don't want to waste my time on someone who is broke. I tell her that it's complicated because when you get to a certain level at a company, you become a flight risk, but also a risk to their long-term strategy as you are considered a strategic asset. So they won't overpay you, but your salary is basically name your price. She says, do you make more than $250K a year or not? That's when I knew it was unsalvageable. She was not just tactless, but rude as well. Also, she would invariably be the type of person to think they should spend all the money as fast as they could. I looked her dead in the eyes and said, image thinking $250K a year is a lot of money, paid for the food, tipped stupidly and left. It was the only date where I felt like I couldn't continue it. Story 13. On a first date, my companion revealed a peculiar hobby. She collected vintage toasters and insisted on showing me her prized collection in her basement. As we descended the stairs, I discovered an underground toaster sanctuary, complete with neon lights and a retro-themed disco ball. She then put on a toaster-themed dance performance to Hot Stuff by Donna Summer. It was a date to remember for all the quirky and unexpected reasons. Story 14. While out watching a movie, some guys came into the theater to sit down, and the girl I went on a date got up and left without saying a word. Just left me sitting there alone in a theater because she didn't want some guy she liked to see she was out with me. Story 15. This was back in my high school days around 2002 to 2003. A girl from the cheerleading team asked me out, and of course I said absolutely. It was a Friday night movie date, simple date, movie, and maybe some ice cream afterwards. I showed up 15 minutes early to buy the tickets. Movie was her choice. Communicated during our initial date conversation. I waited in the concessions area. 15 minutes goes by, no call, no show. For you kids, this was before the first iPhone existed. God, I am old. No message on my Nokia phone. I still have it, and it still works. I wait another 15 minutes, and the movie is about to start. Still no call, no show. I wait another 10 minutes before I head into the movie by myself. I hated the movie. It was called 13. After the movie was done, no call, no show. So I went home. Next Monday, a bunch of the guys in my class and girls were all asking how my date went while snickering. I was set up on a fake date. Story 16. Mine was a meetup at a bar following some Tinder chats. She turns up considerably heavier than her picks. No issue, carry on the date and have a couple of drinks. She then proceeded, without my knowledge, to invite about 10 of her friends to the bar. And she's there holding my arm and cuddling in and trying to get kisses, etc. and acting like we've been dating for months. It was very awkward. I ended up making a getaway, only after she demanded a kiss. Story 17. She spent the entire time talking about Julia Roberts. Like it was brought up so much. Like half the night was spent discussing her love for Julia Roberts. I was neutral on Julia Roberts at that point, but after the date, I didn't like her out of spite. Shish! Story 18. We went to a local hangout brewery. They were having a family event, and she started freaking out about the amount of kids there. I asked if she disliked kids, and then she started to tell me about how she has three, all from different men, and each of them has full custody, and she doesn't have anything to do with any of the kids. She seemed very upset about it, so I said something along the lines of, I'm sorry to hear that. It must be very difficult. She freaked out again, saying that she didn't need my sympathy, and she told me to go fudge myself. After that, I just said, okay, we're done here, and left. When I got home, I noticed I had a message from her. She apologized for losing her temper, and then said that she thinks I'm attractive and that we should be fudge buddies. To make it even better, she then said we'd have to wait a while before we have close relationship, because she was currently waiting for an STD to clear up. It was the one and only time I ever ghosted someone. Story 19 little late, but I have a story. Met a girl on Bumble and we decided to meet up for drinks at a pub I frequent. I get a pint for each of us and the conversation is going well. Go to get us a couple more and we step outside. She then proceeds to start making fun of me for my clothes, old navy button-up shirt, as they were a little poor for her taste. Then a couple friends of mine show up to the pub, purely coincidence. I introduce them and they leave us alone to watch the football game. She proceeds to start slurring her words and poking fun at aspects about me again, but not in a cute way whatsoever. Very malicious. My friend a few tables over cheers at whatever was happening in the game, and she turns around and yells, You! Again, we've only had a beer and a half each. 
She then offers to go get all of us shots at the bar and walks away before we can accept. She then comes back with four empty glasses, talked to the bartender after, and he said he set them out, turned around to grab the bottle to pour them, and when he turned around, they and her were gone. I make up an excuse to leave and then text my friends to let me know when she's gone so I can circle the block and come back to chat with them about what the fudge just happened. Saw she posted on IG the next morning with completely dyed hair with the caption along the lines of, people won't appreciate the good that you do or something. Blocked her on everything immediately. Story 20. OMG, I have one. A beautiful girl in my college class invited me on a date. We were in the same study group and fast became friends, hanging out on breaks and meeting up at the library. She picked a Faley upscale restaurant, at least for college kids. She dressed to impress and she was comedic animated, and held a great conversation. She was very flirty, and I knew where this was heading afterward. The bill comes. It's more pricey than I hoped. We were drinking a fair amount, but she grabbed the check. I offer to pay my share, and she rejects it. She says her dad's a dentist and gives her plenty of money. I, on the other hand, pay for my own school, rent, and bills by working at a restaurant, eating leftovers off of plates and scrapping by. So I was stoked that she invited me, is paying for the date, and clearly, she is planning on using me for hot, close relationship. Then her debit card is rejected. And her credit card. And her other card. She is turning multiple shades of red. Talks about must be fraud, etc. I serve tables. I just make eye contact with the server. And we both play along with her. Server leaves to try the card one last time. I excuse myself from the table. Catch up with the server and tell her to run my card. But I may be short and certainly don't have enough to pay a tip. I promise I'll come back with the difference and a tip before closing. That taken care of, we head to her car, but she can't drive. I dare not. My apt is close by, but she insists on driving. I make a move to kiss her. She gets sloppy with me. So distracted, I take her keys from her coat pocket. I tease her with the keys, say I'll drive because it's confusing where to park at my place. She is in the passenger seat. I actually have no intent to drive, but I needed time to figure out the next moves. I have to get money and go back, so I'm not stiffing the server, but I need to gracefully exit the date. Problem solves itself. She looks me dead in the eyes and says drunkenly something like, I will suck your banana all night if you pick up some cola. You work at a restaurant, right? You know some? The entire evening just made sense. Up to that point, I was sympathetic, thinking how embarrassed she must be. Now I'm pretty pissed. So I decided to drive her back to her apartment through a stream of begging, sobbing, then yelling, and all the antics you could guess. I walk towards her apartment. She's following, trying to pull me back. Roommate hears a ruckus and intervenes, although confused AF. My date is so worked up that she starts to yak on the walkway. Roommate sees her GF is super drunk so corals her inside, where with vomit on her dress all of a sudden seems totally oblivious to the entire night, is acting all cute again, saying how great the date was, do I want to come inside, etc, etc. I quietly hand the car keys to roommate who is pulling her inside. I bail. Rest of the night I'm off to my work where I barter friends for some cash. I then rush back to the restaurant and catch our server in the bar area. She stuck around with other off-the-clock friends just in case I returned. The place was basically closed at this point. So I settled up with her, although with about $8 in change. The group had heard all about my date, so they invited me to sit and share the rest of the story. Bar comped me a beer, so I started, Tonight was the worst date in the history of dates. Story 21. 2012-ish hit up the A Harmony game. Met a cute nurse and we met for dinner one night. Dinner turned into drinks. Drinks turned into my place. Ten minutes after we're done, snuggling in bed. So now you're going to throw me away just like all the rest, and not in some sad or damaged voice. Flipping angry voice. What? You're all the same, just fudge me and throw me away. If I'm pregnant, don't worry, I'll take care of it, and you don't need to know. I'm floored. Asking what's wrong, where's this coming from? Devolves into this crazy situation where she's crying and yelling at me, and I'm trying to calm her down. I told her I thought it'd be a good idea if she left. She said she'd call the cops. I ended up having a sleepless night with her later and then goodbyes and see you soons in the morning. Chatted with her just enough to get some CYA material. So, why'd you say you were gonna call the cops I didn't do anything? Sorry, honey, I know, but I was angry and just saying crazy things to make you scared. But that's okay now's blocked. Spent weeks expecting her to jump out of the bushes and stab me or something whenever I went in and out of the apartment building. Story 22. Burst out in tears that she was still in love with her married ex-BF who broke up with her to go back to his wife and kids when I asked if she had dated anyone recently. Cost me two drinks at the bar, but saved a lot of heartache and left no chance for a second one. Story 23. Went out with a girl to a concert live band karaoke. I got there first and chilled with a drink. She acted like she didn't see me, then texted me to hurry up because she was there, then told me about every dude she hooked up that we passed at the concert. There were multiple. She got really drunk, 
made a fool out of herself on stage, candy me around all night, and asked me to hang out with her in her car. Then she started crying because she didn't want to be alone with a strange, but also didn't want to be alone. So could I please wait until her other male friend got there? She asked me to sit in the back because her friend always sits up front. I dipped out after that last one. Girl was a train wreck. Story 24. This is a weird one. One of my first post-divorce dates. Went to a nice dinner. I paid. Had a great conversation and great chemistry, or so I thought, and then walked her to her car. Had a very brief and kind of weird goodnight kiss. Asked about a second date, and then she tells me that she just started seeing her previous match date. Okay, now I understood the weird goodnight kiss. It was like side of the mouth. But why did she agree to go on the date? When I asked her via text message about that, I got back a diatribe of text saying she does not owe me an explanation. Bad date. Either that or I was her worst first date. Story 25. All right, I was talking to this girl for a while online, and we were hitting it off great common interests, can't stop talking, all the cutesy stuff. We set up a meet to chill at my place. I'm sitting there all excited, BC. I'm gonna get some cat. I get a text. She. I run outside to see a big peach pickup truck. Her in the back seat and her parents in the front, y'all. I was 23 at the time and just kind of looked at them. Her dad leans out the window and goes, You know, she's 17, right? Like, it's fine, but you're the legal adult for a bit, so don't let her get into nothing. B-R-O. What? Felt like Pops was pimping out his kid to me. I just noped the fudge out of there and walked back in my house, deleted, blocked her on everything, and about a month later got a snap from her along with a picture of my house talking about, it's my birthday, we can be together now. So yeah, I stopped talking to strangers on the internet after that. Story 26. I am a mostly boy man. At some point in time after a bad breakup, I decided to explore a bit. There was this one girl that I liked and we talked for a bit before going out. I knew she had lost a kid to some crazy drama involving the father's family. She knew I was boy and this was new for me. She loved that cow for some odd reason. We go out. It goes well. We go back to my place. It gets hot, she says. You don't have to use a condom. I'm on birth control. I'm like, I absolutely do. We start flipping and she reaches down and pulls it off. I firmly assert that we need this. But I want to have your baby. Ugh, what the fudge? Story 27. Told me I shouldn't let others know I'm in therapy. I was a bit late to the date due to this. Then told me she's technically still married. But she ran from her abusive husband. Wanted to call things here, but we were at my favorite pizza joint. Is very drunk as she has been there a few hours. Picks a fight with the table next to us. Leaves to go breathe for 30 minutes. Tries sticking me with a $200 bill racked up by her and a friend of hers. Paid for my pizza and got the fudge out of there after apologizing to the table next to me. Story 28. Two come to mind? First being when the girl spent the entire date listing reasons we shouldn't date. We did work in the same store at the time, but this was only one of the reasons given. Then, at the end of the date, I walked her to her bus stop and she went in for a kiss, which I dodged. Mixed messages, to say the very least. The worst one was probably meeting a girl from Tinder for drinks around the corner from where her mates were out for the night. We had a really good time and she asked if I wanted to go and hang out with them, which we did. Was getting on great with her friends and out of nowhere, a guy she knew showed up looking around awkwardly at the bar. She said she knew he was there for her as he apparently knew her plans for the night, and she said she was going over to ask him politely to leave. It didn't seem to work, however. I was sitting with her friends who felt something was off, and things got more and more awkward the longer she spent talking to him. The way the table was, we could all see what was happening and everyone was watching. She then came over and said she needed a word. She told me she asked him to leave, but now she's decided to go to a gig with him, but that I should stay out with her friends. Before I could respond, she got her stuff and left. Her friends were frankly stunned and very apologetic about the whole situation. It transpired quite quickly that she had texted him at one point asking what he was up to, and that led to the situation. So she dumped me on her mates and messed up off. I left shortly thereafter, and her friends were very sweet about it. About two hours later, I got a slew of missed calls, texts, and voicemails from her in tears, apologizing for the little matter of throwing me aside for someone else mid-date in front of her friends, and wanted to know if I was still in town and to come and see her. Eventually, I called her back to end the spamming. She tried to make some limp excuses and said a number of her friends had called her and ripped her a new one. I said two things. You're only calling me because you made a cow decision, and that I was no one's second choice. I then to the sky up, and she tried for a few years to get back in touch or find me on nights out. Needless to say, bullet massively dodged, if embarrassingly so. Story 29. Went to meet a girl in a pub. I got there early, no biggie, just bought a pint and chilled. I texted her at the arranged time, and she hadn't left her house yet. She would have needed at least 45 minutes to travel to the pub at that particular time of day, and said she needed to stop by her friend's house first. Told her not to bother. Luckily, my friend happened to work around the corner, and we ended up having a few pints and had a good night.
Story 30. Had been talking to this woman for a couple weeks and we decided to go out on a date. She lived about 5-10 minutes from where I was at and called me right before I pulled in her neighborhood and said, I need more time. Give me like 30 minutes. Okay, cool. So I just drove around listening to music for about 30 minutes and then went to her house. I knocked on the door and she answered and said to give her about 10 minutes. I went back to my truck and sat and waited. 10 minutes passed, then 20 minutes. Then a car pulls up behind me and it is her boyfriend. He runs in her house with a six-pack of wine coolers, blocking me in her driveway. Finally, after about an hour, her friend comes out and says, She's coming. About ten minutes later, she comes out drunk off her peach. I still took her out that night, and we ended up dating for a year. Looking back at it, I think I was only sticking around her because of depression issues and loneliness. Had went through a rough divorce six months earlier. Needless to say, lesson learned. Story 31. Had me drive her and her friend to go meet up with some candy addicts so she could get some K2. Then we went back to her friend's house and find out we're locked out, so her friend punches through a window and cuts her arm so badly she's got to go to the ER. Oh, and her sister's kid was inside. She was supposed to be babysitting him the whole time. He wasn't even two years old. Story 32. She asks if I drink. I said no. She said good she only drinks rarely, then proceeds to get hammered. I took her to her house, put her on the couch, covered her with a blanket, and left. Next day, she says she had a blast and only drank because I did. I never drank. That was a first and last date. Story 33. Matched with a girl on Tinder who invited me to her stand-up comedy routine and then proceeded to tell jokes about how disgusting the guys she meets on Tinder are. It was like something from a sitcom. They weren't even good jokes. She had no punchlines. One was just about a guy who had a strap on in his profile pic and nothing after it, so I heckled her with a fine ill. Just changed the picture and then left. Got a couple of laughs, though. Story 34. Not the, the first date, but the worst was when we finally made out. It was a dream come true for all of about 10 seconds until she vomited all over me, including in my mouth. We're still good friends today, and I remind her on a regular basis. Story 35. She wanted to go to several different places to experience things and clearly didn't want to pay. We went on about six rounds. We grabbed an appetizer at one place, dinner at the next, a drink at another, ice cream here, another drink there, etc. The last place we had pricey cocktails, $40 each, and the bill was put in front of her. She slid the bill over to me with one finger. She transformed in front of my eyes. She went from this extremely attractive, slightly older woman to just this unattractive person. She wanted to do something after, which I found out later was to go home with me. I was so turned off that we just called it a night. I decided to end it her after that, but she wanted to go out again. I politely declined. She kept trying to re-engage, though. I happened to have met my wife a few weeks later, and we got pretty serious. When she found out, she never talked to me again. Problem solved. Story 36. I was in high school. Went to pick her up and she said she needed me to go meet her dad. We walk into his study and he's watching a straight-up hardcore prohibited photos with nudity and penetration all over the place. He up, said nice to meet you, and we bolted. I did not shake his hand. Story 37. We were supposed to go for a walk in my town. First, she brings her cousin with her. After only two minutes, she gets a phone call. She's talking for 20 minutes straight on the phone. Then she hangs up and says that she has to go now. We didn't even talk for two minutes. I was always wondering whether this was a real phone call or a planned fake call in case if she didn't find me attractive. Story 38. Wanted to get a to-go order placed and expected me to pay for dinner for her kids and ex-boyfriend that still lived with her. Mind you, she never even mentioned having kids nor that her ex still lived there too. Called me every name in the book when I refused. Story 39. Met her on Tinder. She asked if I have any cute friends for one of her friends. She invited me and a friend over to her house for a party. We go, and it's pretty chill. They're both nice, and the party is fun. Everyone else leaves. The four of us are playing beer pong, and the two of them decide we should play strip pong. We are all pretty drunk by now, and it gets to the point where her friend has to take off her shirt. She gets super emotional and starts bawling her eyes out. Her friend tries to comfort her. She runs away and locks herself in the bathroom, comes out of the bathroom in a rage and gets in her car and drives off. My buddy is like, uh, TF? So he gets in his car and drives off. I spend the night because I'm hammered and not going to drive. Wake up at 5 a.m. and GTFO. She was very nice, though, and I hope her friend is doing okay. Story 40. An hour before the date, she asked if we could meet 30 minutes early. I changed the reservation, booked it out of work, and got there five minutes before the new reservation. 45 minutes later, she arrived. She was more interested in learning how to break into my career field than learning about me. It was like an interview. We ordered appetizers and dinner. After what would be less than a normal amount of time for the appetizers to come out, she pulls a random waiter over to ask where our food was. I answered by pointing to the waiter behind us and saying, It's right there? She then chewed with her mouth open. 
and somehow made it louder than any other person I've ever encountered. It was like a dog licking peanut butter off of a spoon. She repeated the, where's the food trick when the meal came. It was less than five minutes after the appetizers. Again, I answered before the random waiter she was harassing could. I didn't let it happen with dessert. Would you like dessert? No. Please bring the check. I ended it with, this has been unique. Went home and blocked her number. Story 41. I met a woman online and we met for dinner. She decided to spend the entire dinner crying about her husband, who had recently passed away. She drank a bottle and a half of expensive wine and then tried to drive home. I ended up driving her home while she cried in my passenger seat the entire time. She then drunkenly asked for close relationship. I politely declined, left a note on her coffee table with her keys about where her truck was, and locked the door on my way out. I should have left earlier as it was really awkward, but I'm glad I didn't as she would have driven herself, and I wouldn't have been able to live with the knowledge if she hurt somebody. Story 42. Oh boy, do I have a story? Was using Tinder, matched with this bombshell of a girl, and quickly progressed to us meeting up. She wanted me to pick her up, which is whatever, and said ahead of time that she just wanted things to be chill, so we could just grab some fast food and chat. I'm thinking it's great already. I get to her place and the neighborhood is a bit sketchy, but I'm not jumping to conclusions. She comes out, we drive, and start talking, mainly about what we're both in the mood to eat. We struggled a bit on that because I was offering suggestions that were a decent ways away from said neighborhood, but ended up going to this chicken place that has these amazing sandwiches. Things are going really well at this point, and in my head, I'm already thinking that we're going to trade numbers and go out again. Hooking up was a possibility. All that good cow. When she suggested going to this remote spot to do some stargazing, it felt like a guarantee that this would be the first of many dates. Drive out to this spot, she mentioned, chatting away the whole time. And we get there and it was beautiful. Just one of those places where there's practically no electric lights at all. And so what you see is all based on the night sky and how clear it is. We're there for about an hour, talking and holding hands. And someone drives up. A couple of guys get out and start picking a fight. And while I try to de-escalate things and just keep everyone calm, it was clear they weren't going to do anything besides be a pair. So I had to defend myself. One guy sat back while the other started throwing hands. As I'm handling it, I suddenly get hoofed in the balls and buckle. The girl I had spent hours talking to was the one that did it. The guy that I had been fighting started really getting some licks in. And the girl, I found out she wasn't single. Mainly because her tongue was down the throat of the guy that sat back and watched me fight his friend. I give the guy A to the balls as well. And as adrenaline is taking over and I start to get the upper hand, the other guy decides to finally get involved. At that point, I flipping scrambled to my car and drove off as fast as I could. Story 43. I tried online dating once. I was basically tired of being lonely and wanted to see if I could fond someone who I might end up starting a life with. Went through the app and found a beautiful woman who I matched with. We started talking and our conversations would last a while, usually an hour plus. Any who fast forward to date night, keep in mind by date night we had been talking over a week. Some random woman walked up to me and said, Hi, are you blank? And I was like, yeah, who are you? It was my date who used her friend's picture Asher profile pic. I was stunned. She, however, was incredibly upset when I looked at her and asked why she had lied. She wasn't ugly by any means, but she wasn't honest from the start. She started crying when I told her that I was sorry, but I don't think we should try to date because she lied and I couldn't trust her. But that's my worst date. Nothing terrible, but still a bad date. Story 44. She invited me to her place for food and drinks. I show up and she does not look like her Tinder pictures at all. Her place is disgusting with empty beer bottles and trash everywhere. She also had three dogs, two cats, a ferret, and two snakes. She chain-smoked cigarettes the whole time while trying to force beers down my throat. She told me all about how poor her life has been and how the cops are going to come take her away at any time. Apparently, she got a DUI driving 90-plus MPH hammered to go give her ex-boyfriend a BJ. I came up with the first excuse I could to get out of there. It was late at night and her place was far from my place, but close to my job. So I ended up sleeping in my car and heading to work the next day. Worst date ever, Lowell. Story 45. Nothing. Barely responded every time I tried to start a conversation. It quickly became painfully obvious that she didn't want to go out with me. My guess is that she figured I'd bad person out or something if she said no. So she made sure I wouldn't want to ask her out again. I've heard enough stories of guys doing exactly that, so I can't really blame her. It's sad that things are so effed up as to make her feel that way. But I look at the bright side. We had dinner at a new-to-me place, and it was amazing, so I found a good restaurant. Thai seafood and the yellow curry halibut is amazing. Story 46. LL. Long story short, this is real. Living in southern Ontario. Met her when I was out with some other people. She was attractive and alluring. We agreed to go out a couple of evenings later. 
had a nice dinner on the way home past a strip bar. She started discussing how bad it is for the women and that they should unionize. I had no opinions on this. She started asking me about helping to unionize them. Very strange. But the way she was getting worked up about it, I asked her if she used to dance. She said yes, then continued to get very angry with me, saying I didn't understand. Now I knew she was nuts. Her car was at my house, so I pulled up and let her know to just go home and I wasn't inviting her in. I went into the house and already had my shoes off and the TV on when there was a knock at the door. She asked if she could use the bathroom before she drove home. I allowed her to and a few minutes later she came out of the bathroom and begged me close relationship with her. It was hard, but I told her no a bunch of times and then told her I would call the cops if she didn't leave. I stood there with the door open. She finally walked out to her car, carrying her clothes, got into her car and left. Story 47. Wasn't a first date, but more so a second first date. Basically, we kind of dated for two months during the winter, but we were just too busy with various things, so we broke it off. Decided to give it another in the summer, and we were going to see the new Transformers, Transformers 3, so we made a date of it. Drinks before and the movie after. Drinks went fine. We picked up right where we left off until she got a text. Her phone screen was on and upside down as she was obviously sitting across the table from me. I can still read upside down, though, and I saw she was texting another guy. Think his name was Lance, but I can't remember. This happened a few more times while we were getting drinks, and I was getting really suspicious, but I didn't say anything. When we got to the theater and were waiting in line to get in, she continued texting. This time she was standing next to me, so I could peek at what she was saying a little easier. Lance, I just got off work. I'm so tired. Her, you can sleep in my bed tonight. That was all I needed to see. Once we got inside, I asked her who she's been texting all night. She said she was texting her sister. I called her out on her nonsense and asked who Lance was. Got the, he's just a friend response of which I wasn't buying it. I could have should have left. But at the time, I really wanted to see Transformers 3. So I sat in silence next to her the entire movie. It was super awkward and the movie sucked. When we got to the parking lot after the movie, she tried to say she was just texting her sister and asked how do I know about Lance. I told her that I could see her texting him while we were getting drinks and that I saw one of the texts while we were waiting in line for the movie. There was no talking her way out of it. Told her that was it. This wasn't going anywhere. Don't want to see her again, etc. And that was that. That was the last I ever heard from her or saw her. Story 48. A meetup with a friend of a common friend to both of us because... We seem like a good mat. I negotiated to meet with her over coffee in lieu of a double date, as I prefer a simple thing, and if there is no chemistry, it's a low-commitment thing. We meet, she sees my car, a subcompact, and looks visibly disgusted. We introduce ourselves, and she commented that she didn't expect someone short, as she usually dates taller guys. He asked about my car, confirming that it is what I normally drive. While we talk, she's clearly disinterested, spending more time texting that engaging with me. After an hour, I stop trying and excuse myself saying that I'd rather not waste any more of her time since she seems more interested in doing anything else. A few hours later, matchmaker calls me, and her tone is annoyed because I left. I explained my side, got screeched at because I should have put in more effort. I explained that she was the one disinterested, texting people because she's clearly not interested in me. Moving past more descriptions of drama to learn from matchmaker's husband privately that the meetup was in the hopes to us hitting it off so they have another couple to go out with. So it was never about me, it was just for matchmaker. Story 49. Two years ago on a first date with a girl, she brought her teenage daughter to the date. When I planned it, I thought it would be just the two of us. But an hour before I was supposed to be there, she told me her kid would be with her. It was a good dinner, and she's a good mom who's raising genuinely good kids and stuff. I just felt like it's a red flag because it feels like you're trying to put it in the kid's mind that I'm going to be around a long time. And I'm over here still trying to get to know her mom. I don't like rushing into long-term commitments. The kid being there felt like pressure being put on me. And I don't know that it was so comfortable for her kid either. I didn't make a fuss about it, though, because if there's no reliable person who can help watch your kids or run them to whatever extracurricular thing they're doing, a single parent has to run their kids everywhere, which means making time to do something just for herself a challenge. I understood that as I got to know her better. I ended up moving away for better paying work, though, so it didn't last. Story 50. 30 seconds into the ride, she says, Okay, so tell me about all your trauma. So I tell her about myself for about four to five minutes. Then she proceeds to trauma dump her entire life on me for the next hour or so while peppering in a question or two about me. Should have known that was the first sign of NPD. Proceeded to date her for six months and it was the worst relationship I've had. Definitely learned my lesson. Story 51. Chatted me up on OKC. Was fun, flirty, and legit interesting. Easy on the eyes too. Got to the first date and it was like night and day. Wasn't interested in talking to me at all. Ordered the most expensive entree, appetizer, and drinks. 
dessert too. Finished eating, wiped her mouth and said, thanks, but I'm a sapphic. I told her that I would have happily taken her out to dinner if she was just honest with me up front. But she decided to do it in the worst way possible. It's like, I'm sorry for what other men did to you, but you could be a little bit less of a piece of cow about it. But thanks for playing with my heart, I guess. Story 52. Not quite a blind date, but pretty close. We got our drinks but hadn't ordered yet. She excused herself to the restroom. She came back looking pissed off. Some bad person at the bar bumped into me, and her boyfriend came told me to watch where I was going. Then she called me a unpleasant. Wow, couple of assholes. Sounds like they were made for each other. So I was thinking about the lobster ravioli. What about you? I'm sorry, what? Are we talking about food? I just told you that some dude called me a unpleasant, and you want to know what I'm going to stuff my face with? I thought the girlfriend called you a unpleasant. Who cares? The point is, someone disrespected your woman. And you're just going to sit here? Not for much longer. The fudge is that supposed to mean? I'm not going to keep sitting here with you acting like this. What kind of man just sits there while some unpleasant person has disrespected his girlfriend right in front of him? You're right. What was I thinking? I'm going to go fudge that guy up. A right. You'd better. I walked up to the front and gave the hostess $20 for the drinks and told her I was bailing on my date. She looked at me like she had smelled a fart, but there was no way I was slowing down to explain myself. Story 53. One, she insisted on going to Red Lobster. Two, she was over an hour late. Three, she was not the girl in the picture. Four, she was on probation for beating her ex with a fire extinguisher. I spent the entire date sitting at the bar while she ate and I got my food to go. I dodged a hug and waved goodbye. Most people would get a hint. She followed me home and I popped a U and floored it in another direction and she texted me. I thought you wanted me to come over. Story 54. I was at a friend's party many years ago. He had just gotten back from deployment. During the party, it came out that while away, his girl slept with his best friend, who was also present at the party. I just silently sat back and watched as the party devolved into a drunken Jerry Springer dumpster fire for hours. Anyways, like two days later, that same girl private messaged me acting all interested and asking to come visit so I could show her around town. Technically, I never let it get to a first date because I never responded to her, but that whole experience was one of the worst ways to put your best foot forward before trying to get a first date. Story 55. She's starting choking me out during close relationships several times, even after I asked her to stop. I left feeling pretty used and hurt, but nothing I can do about it. Weird feeling, though. Twice her size, but couldn't really do anything in the moment. Just sort of froze up. I don't really feel like having one-night stands after that. But maybe that's not the worst lesson for me to learn. Story 56. Because of our online dating profiles, she knew I hated smoking. She told me she used to breathe, but she had quit. After dinner was over, I had to use the bathroom. I expected her to wait at the table, but when I came out of the bathroom, she was waiting outside. Okay, fine. Then I noticed she reeked of cigarettes. Called her out on it. She denied it at first, but when I pressed the issue, she admitted it. The fact that she tried to hide it from me and lied about it to me is a bigger red flag than the actual smoking. Story 57. Invited me to her apartment. Red flag. Offered me straight tequila, which she was clearly already partaking of. Red flag. Put on Nirvana's assault song. Red flag. Heavy petting and she wants to know if I want breakfast in the morning, to which I say I never spend the first night. She tells me to get out, accuses me of trying to assault her, and gets me perma-blocked on the app we met. I should never have gone over there. Story 58. Not super bad, but I had a first date at a restaurant that went pretty well. When the bill came, I was ready to pay or split or whatever. The whatever turned out to be for her to offer $10 towards the $100 bill. I was just confused as to how she came up with $10. She got really offended by the question, though. She was a veterinarian, too, so it wasn't like she was poor. Story 59. Scolded and insulted her cat, which had a genetic mental thing. She said he had Down syndrome and called him an idiotic nuisance and a bother. I almost abducted that little critter right there and then before I walked out. In reality, I told her I felt she had pretty horrible morality. The Adolf Hitler funny gifts also should have been a red flag. And I didn't like the way she treated her cat. Story 60. In college, my friend got two tickets to a concert and invited a classmate to join him. She basically used him for the ticket and spent the night hanging out with the guy she was actually dating. Even left with the other guy. It was a super downer. I was there with my GF and it was just really poor to see a friend treated like that. Story 61. She showed up with her weird flipping children of the corn son without asking me if she could bring him along. The whole time at the restaurant, he wouldn't stop calling everything boy. This food is boy. These people are boy. This restaurant is boy. Your hair is boy. I was embarrassed and I finally asked her to say something to this little cow. And she ever so quietly and meekly says, Caleb, it out, please. But of course, that just makes him keep going. So now he's standing on his chair, telling people that they're boy, this place is boy, etc., etc., so on and so forth. So I tell him to sit down and this little crotch fruit says, I don't have to listen to you. 
You're not my real dad, to which I respond, You're right, I'm not your dad. If I was, you'd be a whole lot smarter and better looking. I wish I could say I had an awesome exit like paying my tab and getting in my car. But alas, I took the bus there, so I just went to the bus stop, which was directly across from the restaurant, and they could see me from their table. So basically, she just watched me wait for the bus, while her and her son sadly ate the remains of their moderately priced pasta dinner. Story 62. Agreed to meet for a date? Location was kind of far away, but I got on the bus and arrived a few minutes early. I get a text saying they're a few minutes away. Soon a car drives past, and I see her looking at me from the passenger seat. Another couple minutes go by, and I get another text along the lines of, Sorry, my grandmother is sick, and I won't make it. Pretty much just a brew moment. Got back on the bus and went home. No idea what I did wrong. I looked like my profile photos, and I was wearing nice, smart clothes. Took one look at me and ran away lol. Story 63. I went to pick her up, and as we were leaving, she had to double back and take the foulest cow I have ever smelled. I grew up near farms, I've smelt some nasty cow in my day, but this was flipping disgusting. She ended up taking another shower. It was a co-worker's daughter, so I couldn't just leave. Story 64. Invited her to a simple nice dinner, all approved. At the time and place established, no sign of her, called her, and she just went with, don't call me you pervert. I said okay, I will cancel the book table and just go home. She reaches me two hours later, via call telling me it was a joke conceived by her sister, to test me, and we can rebook another dinner. I just said that I need a decent girl, not a clown, and just blocked her. Story 65. Not me, but my buddy. Went in a double date with her and my buddy, me and my ex. It went pretty well, and then she went home with another man. Broke it off with the ex and found out months later that she cheated in me with multiple guys. Not really a surprise, to be honest.